I decided to shoot a little bit of a teardown video here uh, of the Anker, uh, what is this, Anker 2100, or 2100 milliamp Qualcomm quick charge 3.0 supported battery bank. Uh, had to really mangle the case to get it apart. I would not suggest it. The, the cells are even glued to the roof and taped. Um, ended up taking a Dremel and a bottle opener in about an hour, so I don't recommend it. Um, but the big problem I had was uh, I was trying to use this as a multi-source power source where it could um, act as like an interoperable power supply where you can have it plugged in and, and it will also then output power. And so if it loses power at any point, um, it can still keep powering your devices because it's going to run a Raspberry Pi off one of the ports and fake it out with the 2.0 uh, quick charge specification to run 12 volts for some solenoids. But the problem is when the thing is charging, it will not, uh, it will not continue charging the devices at the same time. It's one or the other. Um, and that's not really ideal for my application. Uh, quick thing here, I think these, I didn't really look at the cells, but I would imagine they say they're Panasonic cells, so I'll believe them. Um, hooked up in parallel, all as one big cell. Uh, the chip here is a uh, MP2636 single cell, whatever. Oh, let me run out of battery. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for the uh, all this fun stuff, but... Uh, that seems to be the culprit because it's integrated so it does charge and discharge to the same chip. But I got to pull it off here and I'll uh, look at it a little bit later um, because the uh, that does not support the quick charge so there must be another chip on here that uh, talks that and uh, another switch regulator here. Um, but yeah and then and this is some Holtec 8-bit uh, MCU with an EEPROM on it. Uh, other than that, I haven't seen a whole lot else on this thing, but rugged as heck, I would say. It's a uh, pretty good thing for $40, but not exactly what I was expecting, unfortunately. So I'll uh, come back with more of this taken apart. A little something I noticed going through the data sheet. They actually have the recommended layout here, and uh, judging from what I can tell from the uh, pin marking, they actually have the inductor on the complete opposite side. So kind of interested to see how like how they actually get the trace over there. Um, I mean, it shouldn't really affect it that much. I don't think it's a very high frequency uh, converter, but just not recommended practice, I guess. Here's the bottom side of uh, that uh, control board. Don't really I don't know what's on that yet, I haven't really looked at it. But a uh, bunch of date codes and whatnot. And you can see underneath here, um, I must say they do like the gunk, so this thing isn't falling apart if you drop it. Um, but I can't find that other converter yet. I'll see if I can pop out this other bottom board here. But if the top side's an indication, I bet they glued the cells in on the back side, so. It might be a little tough with the uh, short leads there, but they had to assemble it somehow. But probably before the glue. Alright, I think I'm going to stop my tear down here before I actually break something that's uh, critical to keeping this thing alive. Uh, I took off that board there, and actually, I found the uh, chip that's running the Quick Charge 3.0, which I'm guessing it's actually that, that uh, MCU is actually communicating and doing the Qualcomm 3.0 initiating it guessing why that that's why there's so many ports here um, but the converter is conveniently soldered directly below this inductor here and I can't really even get at it or even look at the bottom side because all these cells are glued in and that wire right there is directly attached to the whole thing and it's just not really worth it but overall I'd say Build quality is pretty damn good on this thing. Um, a lot of gunking and stuff to make sure stuff doesn't rattle around or break or anything like that. And also for thermal control. I did notice, which you probably can't see on here, but it almost looks like there's an aluminum heat sink on the back side of this. 
Um, and if you look, there's a bunch of vias around here. Um, you know, for the amount of power that they're putting through this and the space that they have, I wouldn't be surprised that that's a, uh, uh, that that's actually just a big thermal mass slash heat sink to conduct to the outside. Um, also makes it a lot more rigid because it is a pretty thin board otherwise, but yeah, all these vias will be sinking away a lot of heat. Um, the one thing I did not see, which could be on the other side, but I don't really see wires going for it, is the NTC for sensing temperature on the cells. That's a little bit worrisome, um, especially because it's a black case. You leave it in a window and you charge the thing, you might burn your house down. But I'm assuming it's on the back side because, I mean, you can't... It's rule number one about lithiums, make sure they don't get too hot. So I, I wouldn't doubt that there is one somewhere. Yeah, that about does it for this uh, review, teardown.